I hope you like solving algorithms, because in today's video, I'm going to be going over the longest common prefix algorithm and showing you the two most common ways to solve it, as well as comparing and contrasting those two ways in order to figure out which one is the most efficient. Let's get started now. Actually, before we get started, if you enjoy this video, make sure to let me know down in the comments below and tell me what algorithm you want me to cover in the future. Okay, now roll the intro. The longest common prefix algorithm is great because it's not necessarily difficult to solve, but the two common methods to solve it are so similar, it's great to be able to compare and contrast them to figure out why one is better than the other, even though they may look to be exactly the same in efficiency. So let's take a look at what the algorithm is asking us to do. It says that we need to write a function to find the longest common prefix string amongst an array of strings that we're given, and if there is no prefix, we just return an empty string. So we look at the first example, we get three words, flower, flow, and flight, and all of these start with fl, which is the longest common prefix, so we return fl. Down here, we see dog, race, car, and car. They have nothing in common because it has to be at the beginning of the word. It has to start there. And so since there's no common prefix for these, we just return an empty string here. And that's all you really need to know about the algorithm to get started. So let's look at the first most common solution, which is the horizontal method. We're going to take an array here of four different words. We're going to have apple, apply, ape, and at. And the goal is to find the longest common prefix, which in our case, we know is going to be a. Now with the horizontal method, we're going to take the first and the second word from the array, and we're going to compare them letter by letter to see where they have similarities and differences. So we're first going to look at the A, which is the first letter in both of them, and we see that they both start with an A, so we continue on to the next letter, which is P, they all are the same, go to the next one, which is P, the next one, which is L, still the same, and we finally get to the last word, which is E and Y, and we see that there's a difference, so we know the longest common prefix in those two is going to be APPL. So then we take APPL, and then we compare that prefix that we determined and compare it to the very next word, which in our case is ape. So we compare APPL to ape. And we have the A that's the same and the P that's the same. And then the word ape has an E and APPL has a P. So we know that there's a difference. So now we have AP as our longest common prefix. And we move on to the very next word, which is at. So we compare the A and we see that that's the same. And then we compare the P and the T and we see that those are different so that we know that we are done. And our longest common prefix is A because there's no other elements in the array to look at. Now using this method will give us the correct answer every single time, but one thing you may notice is as in our example, the words at the beginning of the array, such as apple and apply, have a lot in common, their prefix is very long, while the words at the end of our array don't have very much at all in common with the words at the beginning, so the prefix is much shorter. And this causes us to accidentally waste time calculating the prefix for the longer words of apple and apply, even though that prefix does not apply to the later words in our array. So we're wasting a few computations doing that. So the next method that we can take a look at, which avoids that problem, is called the vertical method. And the way the vertical method works is instead of comparing two words at a time, you compare all of the words at once, but you compare them one letter at a time. So for example, we take the very first character from all of our different words, which in our case is A for apple, A for apply, A for ape, and A for at, and we say, is each one of these characters exactly the same? If so, move on to the next character in every single one of our words. And in our case, we see that the P and the P are the same for apple and apply. We see that the P and the P are the same for ape and ap apply. But when we get down to ape and at, we see that the P and the T are different. So we know right there and then that our longest prefix is A, and we can stop without having to go further into a apple and apply and ape. We can just stop right there at the A. Now, one thing to note is that these algorithms have exactly the same space complexity and time complexity which in theory would make you think that they're both equally as valid to the solution. But one thing to note is that the vertical slice method has a better time to solve the problem in the best case scenario than the horizontal method. Let's just take a look at a really contrived example where you have an array of a thousand different words and all of the words are exactly the same except for the very last word is completely different. Let's say we have a thousand words that are apple and the very last word is tiger. So using the horizontal method, you have to go through each word in the array, apple, 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 apple. You have to do that 999 times before you finally get down to tiger and you realize, okay, we can quit. There's no common prefix. But with the vertical slice method, you go through the first letter of every single word, all the A's for apple. So you do that 999 times, but you only have to go through that first letter. And then you get down to tiger and you realize, oh, this is completely different. We can kit out immediately without having to do all of the rest of the letters of apple for all the other words. This is where the vertical slice method is much quicker to solve the algorithm in these certain scenarios. Now let's take a look at how we'd code the vertical slice method to solve this problem in JavaScript. Now before we start writing the real code, let's write a little bit of pseudocode to understand what we want to do. The first thing we need to do is we just want to define a prefix variable, which we're just going to default to an empty string. Then what we want to do 
is we want to loop through all of the characters. So we're going to say loop through characters, and this is just going to give us the character as well as the index for whichever character we're already on. Then inside of that loop, what we want to do is we want to loop through all of the strings, and this is going to return to us just a single string that we can use. Then now once we have all of our strings inside of a loop as well as all of our characters in a loop, we need to do the comparison to make sure that our strings all have the same character at the beginning. So what we can do in here is we can just say that we want to compare, so if str of index, so essentially whichever character is at that specific index inside of our string is equal to our character, then we know that everything is good and we can continue. But if for some reason these are not equal, so we'll say not equal, what we want to do inside of this scenario is we want to actually just exit out and return our prefix. So we're going to say return prefix. And this is because if our strings do not match, our characters do not match, we now no longer have a prefix that can be any longer than our current prefix, and we immediately need to return our prefix that we have. But if for some reason we get outside of this entire loop, so we're down here, outside of our entire loop for all of our strings, we know that they all match the prefix, so we can add that character to our prefix. So we can just say our prefix is going to be equal to our prefix plus our character, and we can continue looping through like that until we get to the very end, and if we get out of sight of all of our loops, we just want to return our prefix. I know this pseudocode right here is going to give us everything we need to do in order to write our real code, so let's start that right now. First thing we can do is actually define our prefix. So we can just say prefix is going to be equal to an empty string. And now before we jump into looping through all of our different characters and arrays, we want to check to make sure we actually got past an array with actual items in it. So we're going to say here that if our strings.length is going to be equal to zero, that means we have absolutely nothing in our array, we can just return our prefix, which is an empty string, which means that there's no common prefix because there's no arrays to loop through. Now we want to start looping through the characters. And to do this, what we need to do is just create a for loop. We're going to have a variable here. We're going to set it equal to zero to start with. We're going to make sure that i is less than our strings zero, which means we're just going to get the first string in our array of all of our strings. And we want to check to make sure it's less than the length of that. And we're going to increment this by one as we go. So essentially what this for loop is going to do is loop through all of the different characters of our very first string. And the reason we only need to loop over our first string is if we somehow run out of characters on our first string, we know that that's the longest common prefix because we can't go any further since that's the longest our shortest string is. So instead of here, we can actually set our character. So we're just going to say our character is going to be equal to strs of zero again, and we just want to get the ith character. So just like this, this is going to give us the ith character, so at the very beginning it's going to give us our first character, second character, third character, and so on as we loop through it. Now we can do another for loop instead of here. We're just going to create a variable called j. Whoops, j. We're going to default that to zero. We're going to say when j is less than the length of our strings array because we want to loop through all of our different strings, and we're going to increment j. Now that we have that loop complete, let's work on our comparison. So we just in here are going to take our strs. We want to get the jth element, which is the string that we're on inside of this loop, and we want to get the ith character of that, which is from our character loop. And all we need to do is compare that to our current character. So we say, if they are not equal, which is our comparison down here, we want to just return our prefix. So we can say return prefix. And this will return any time that we find a character that is not the same, which means we no longer are able to do our prefix. And if somehow we get all the way through this for loop without running into any issues, we just want to make our prefix equal to our prefix plus the character that we just went through, because now we know that this character is in every single string. And if we get outside of all of our loops down here, we just want to return our prefix. And that's all the code we need to write this longest common prefix. Let's run it just to make sure everything works, see if our test case passes. And as you can see, it finished and our test case was successful. So now let's submit this code in order to make sure everything went through correctly. And if we pull this over and look at our submission, you see that it was successful. It was much faster than most other submissions and quite a bit less memory than other submissions, which is great. And that's all it takes. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to check out my other algorithm-based videos, which are going to be linked over here, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Also, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, make sure to comment down below what other algorithms you want me to solve, because I really enjoy making these videos. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.